A very good morning to one and all on behalf of KR Sri Narayana College, Valanchiri. I welcome you all to Dishana 2021, a multidisciplinary international webinar series organized by KR Sri Narayana College, Valanchiri, in association with Kerala State Higher Education Council. I request all the participants to mute your audio and video to avoid disturbance and bandwidth issues. I also request to put your mobile phone on silent mode throughout the program. Thank you so much. Let's begin the program by invoking Almighty of God. Prayer. Deva me kato kolgangu kai vida dingu nyangale navigam ni bhava dikya ora vivan toni nin padam unnu na Spandamaganam Anna Vastradi Muttade Tanu Rekshichu Nyangale Tanyara Kunani Unu Tanya Nyangal Kutambura Adium Tirayum Katum Adavum Pole Nyangalum Mayayum Nin Mahimayum Niyum Shrashtavayatum Shrashti Jalavum Niyello Devame Shrashti Kulla Samagriyayatum Niyello Mayayum Mayavayum Mayavinodanum Niyello Mayayeniki Sayujim Nalgumarinum Ni Satyam Narayana College is a self-financing institution established in 2016 located at Valanchiri, Malapuram district. The college is affiliated with the University of Calicut and offers UG courses, BA Economics and English, BCom Finance, Computer Applications, BBA, BSc Geology, Computer Science, Psychology and Physics. The institute is committed to excelling in all its disciplines and provides training in developing professional responsibility, social sensitivity and cultural awareness. Management commitment and vision is reflected in all areas including infrastructure, staff selection, motivation, conducted of skill development classes and industrial visit. Dishana 2021 is a multidisciplinary international webinar series organized by KR Srinarayana College, Valanchiri, in association with Kerala State Higher Education Council from 8th November 2021 to 29th November 2021. Archaeology of Kerala, today's topic in relation with international we webinar conducted by Department of History. Archaeological studies provide valuable insights into the history of Kerala. Artifacts, monuments, inscriptions, and ancient coins have an important role in Kerala's archaeological studies. Remnants of the pre megalithic era, megalithic monuments, remnants of Buddha and Chi, sex, Hindu temples, Christian churches, mosques, mosques, places, and places of historic importance would come under the title archaeological monuments. The stone inscriptions found the Kerala date back to various dynasties. Ancient foreign coins discovered from different parts of the state throw light on the international commercial relations of the past. 
Kerala State Department of Archaeology is the archaeology department of government of the Kerala. It had its origin in Travancore State Archaeology Department, which was started in December 1891. It forms a part of the Ministry of Culture. The department was for formed in 1962, integrating the Travancore Archaeology Department and the Archaeology Research Center of East, East Wild, Kochi. The main function of the department includes publishing of volume on the stone inscriptions, discover from various places, copying of copper plate inscriptions, conducting excavations and explorations, the measure to protect historical monuments dating back to 200 BC onwards, which lies skirted the different parts of the state. It is the time for welcome speech. Now I invite Amina A, Head and Department of uh, Economics for welcome speech. Ma'am, please. A warm morning to all. It's my immense pleasure and proud uh, to welcome all the delegates for this webinar from different parts of India on behalf of Kyastri Narayana College. Prominently, I would like to uh, welcome our Honorable Principal, uh, Kyastri Narayana College, Dr. Anil V, and the coordinator of international webinar series, Dr. Jitin, Head Department of Physics, uh, and the sole effort behind today's webinar session, Mr. Riju from Department of History, uh, Mr. Shijil K, Assistant Professor, Department of Economics, uh, and Ms. Aisha Fida, Student Compare, Department of Economics, and my dear faculty members and dear students. Uh, history is a discipline which carrying huge academic relevance, just the, it, an interesting experience about past events and narratives. And in su such an aspect, the archaeology of India carrying huge relevance. Uh, for that, uh, a very, uh, I would like to welcome uh, today's very distinguished personality, Dr. Selva Kumar, uh, head of the department uh, of maritime history and uh, archaeology uh, from Tamil University, Tanjavur. Sir, uh, with immense pleasure and proud, I welcome you on behalf of K.R. Srinarayana College. Uh, I Once again, I wish you each and every one uh, a very memorable time, a great time to all. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Now I invite Mr. Riju K, Assistant Professor, Department of History, for presidential address. Sir, please. Good morning, all. The esteemed principal coordinator of the international webinar series organized by KR Srinarayana College, Dr. Jidin Sir, Amina, Head and Assistant Professor of Department of Economics, Mr. Chidya Sir, Assistant Professor, Department of Economics, and dear faculty members and my dear students. It's my privilege to deliver the presidential address to chair such an eminent webinar series uh, conducted by the Department of History on the topic Archaeology of Kerala. Uh, the next moment, uh, this webinar is as a part of history. So history is an unending dialogue between the past and the present. We can collect the history through in different sources, the archaeological and the non-archaeological sources. Then archaeological sources provided a valuable insight into the history of Kerala. Uh, artisans, monuments, inscriptions, and the ancient coins have an important role in Kerala archaeological studies. The stone inscriptions found in Kerala date back to the various dynasties also. And here, uh, Dr. Selva Kumar, uh, the head of the Department of Marine History and Marine Archaeology in Tamil University, Panchavu, he spent his valuable time and energy with us for this section. I would like to express my sincere wishes and the greetings to each one of you to invest your valuable time in the lecture and the energy. Have a great time, a great session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Now, it is the time to invite our resource person for the session. I am very much privileged to introduce and honor our chief guest, Dr. V. Selva Kumar. Dr. Vishal Kumar is, a head, is head, head of the Department of Maritime History and Marine Archaeology, Tamar University, Tanjavur. He completed doctoral research and postdoctoral research from Deccan College, Pune. He was a faculty member at the at Center of Heritage Studies, Triponitora, Kerala from 2003 to 2017, and the Department of Epigraphy. 
and Archaeology of Tamar University, Tanjore, from 2007 to 2017. He was in Nehru Press for the Indian collections at the Victoria and Albert Museum, visiting researcher at the Center for Maritime Archaeology, Southampton University in 2004, with NTICVM UK visiting fellowship in 2018. He was trained in ceramic studies at UCL and the British Museum. His research interests include archaeology of India, prehistory, heritage management, maritime history and archaeology, archaeological theory, heritage management, history of science and technology, ceramic studies, Indian Ocean and cultural interactions, and eco criticism. Even though he is a busy with his academic matters, he joined here our humble request. We heartfully invite Dr. Selvakumar Selva sir to deliver the session. Sir, please. Uh, good morning, all of you. Can you see my video? OK, I think there is some technical problem. Yeah, uh, I would like to thank the K.R. Sri Narayana College Department of History and uh, uh, Dr. Anil and uh, Ms. Amina and uh, K. Riju and uh, Sigil who are part of this program uh, and for inviting me to make this uh, presentation. Um, today, I'm going to speak on uh, the archaeology of uh, Kerala. Um, I think I will okay. I will join again. I think there is some technical problem. One second. Right. So today I am going to speak uh, on the archaeology of uh, Kerala. Um, as uh, the person who introduced me uh, mentioned about archaeology covering several aspects of uh, epigraphy, numismatics, and all other monuments. Uh, today I am not going to focus on all these aspects. I am going to directly focus on the material cultural as aspects and the archaeology of the prehistory and uh, early history of Kerala. Uh, because archaeology is such a vast subject, in order to cover the entire range, we need a lot of time. So I decided to focus on a particular aspect related to the early history of Kerala. Now I'll share my PowerPoint. Is there, uh, can I share my, can you give me the privilege to share the PowerPoint because this uh, permission is not seen here. Okay, uh, so uh, when we look at uh, the history of uh, South India, we have earliest uh, evidence for uh, human occupation. I'll wait uh, till the PowerPoint presentation. In the meantime, without wasting much time, I can speak on certain introductory point. If, if we want to understand the history of Southern India, we need to go back to the place called Athirambakam near Chennai where we have evidence for human occupation beginning around 1.5 million years ago. That is about 15 lakh years ago. And all over India, we have a lot of evidence for prehistoric uh, people and uh, communities. And coming to the part of Kerala, we don't have as much evidence dating back to 1.5 million years ago but definitely we can say people have been living in kerala for the past one lakh years now i'll share my power uh, point window okay yeah 
Yes. I hope you can see my uh, screen. OK. Yeah. So now, uh, when we come to Kerala's uh, early history, we have to look into what are the different uh, cultural periods we have. Uh, the history of early history of Kerala is divided into various cultures, namely Paleolithic, Mesolithic, and the Neolithic culture is absent. We have Iron Age megalithic culture that dates to around 1000 BCE, continues uh, up to 500 BCE. Then we have early historic or what is in Tamil Nadu known as Sangam Age, dating from say approximately 500 BCE to 500 CE. It is during this period, Kerala was very active uh, and it was connected to the Indian Ocean world through the Indo-Roman and other trade uh, activities. Now we will look into the evidences. As you see, we have evidence of um, you know, uh, Kerala dating back to uh, 1,50,000 years ago. But prior to that, we don't have ev any evidence for human occupation in this area. Uh, and uh, when we come to Kerala, we, uh, we have very limited evidence when compared to what is found in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is another important area that had good connection with uh, southern Tamil Nadu and Kerala. We have evidence of uh, microliths dating from. Microliths are a kind of tools, very tiny tools that were produced about 45,000 years ago. This was a new technology introduced about 45,000 years ago. And we have several caves in Sri Lanka producing these microliths at an early uh, time period and uh, similar evidence is lacking in southern Tamil Nadu and also in uh, Kerala. Uh, as far as ta southern Tamil Nadu is concerned, we have certain sites where we have evidence for human occupation dating back to say uh, 40,000 years ago. Uh, and um, in, in the case of Kerala, we have better evidence when compared to southern uh, Tamil Nadu. Uh, and uh, coming to the Kerala part, several researchers have undertaken research, mainly Colonel Todd identified certain microliths near Chovayur, and then Paleolithic tools were identified by Dr. Rajendran at, in uh, Kanjirapura Valley in Palakkad. And uh, similar tools have been reported in many parts, mainly Rajendran and uh, Thambi, Badmanab and Thambi, and KG John, uh, Ramesh, and K. Rajan, and these are the few people who have uh, explored um, the parts of Kerala and identified the Paleolithic artifacts. These are some of the Paleolithic artifacts identified in the Palkad region by uh, P. Rajendran. So this uh, particular uh, site was identified by Rajendran, and there is a book by Cultural History of Kerala published by Gurukal and Raghav Variyar where you can find these photographs. These are some of the earliest tools. As far as the Paleolithic is concerned, we have a lot of evidence in the Palkad region. Uh, and maybe because this, this is the region where we have good exposure of rocks and other materials, unlike other parts of Kerala, where we have laterite formations and thick forest, with, which, is, which does not pr uh, preserve the evidence. One of the problem is, we have very limited evidence because of the high rainfall and dense for a densely forested nature of Kerala landscape. And the evidence are not visible. Uh, evidence not visible does not mean that they are not there. Definitely Kerala had a prehistoric uh, occupation. Unfortunately, we are not able to find them abundantly. These are some of the tools um, like uh, points and uh, flakes and cores, which we can you can see. These are certain choppers that have been reported from the region of um, uh, Kanjirapura and around the Palakkad area. And this is the region where you get a lot of these uh, uh, rock formations are uh, available. And these rocks have been chosen for uh, making artifacts. Ramesh has uh, identified uh, 
probable tool from Vanimel River Basin near Kolikod. And also, he has identified choppers and side scrapers in Anakayam uh, and also in Kasargod area. Uh, some of the problem with uh, these finds uh, is uh, that we are not uh, getting very well designed tools or very well shaped tool like uh, what we are getting in Tamil Nadu or um, uh, Andhra Pradesh or Karnataka. That can be attributed to the quality of the raw material. Then we are moving into the Mesolithic period. Mesolithic period is the next stage. Paleolithic is known as the old stone age for which we have limited evidence in Kerala. Coming to the Mesolithic period, we have a lot of um, evidence across Kerala. We have uh, uh, microlithic tools reported from several sites. We have non-geometric uh, tools, unifacial chopper, bifacial points, and these microlithic populations were very active in Kerala. Unfortunately, we have completely ignored their history. And these people were the earliest hunter-gatherers. In archaeology, they are called as hunter-gatherers who are making um, tools out of quartz material. Several sites are identified across Kerala apart from these sites. And these people were primarily hunting and uh, gathering the forest produce. These were the earliest settle, settlers of Kerala. The site of Termala near Kollam that has been excavated and there is one uh, C14 date of 5210 BP that means around 3000 BC uh, that has been uh, done by uh, Dr. Rajendran. One thing we know when the Indus civilization was uh, very active in the uh, northwestern part of India, Kerala was occupied by uh, the people who were using uh, stone tools. Similarly, Tamil Nadu also, we don't have much Neolithic occupation and these people were hunter-gatherers. Uh, and uh, that kind of evidence is found all across Kerala. You can see some of these tiny tools and they planted these tools on wooden and bone object and used them as composite tools. So these are the only tools available for the uh, lives of these particular groups. These are some more uh, photographs. And uh, uh, we can say the Kerala, uh, Kerala's uh, prehistory stops around uh, 1000 BCE. From then, we have these uh, Iron Age uh, community. Uh, like, uh, as I already said, Tenmala and Kolangodu, these are some of the uh, areas where we have evidence for uh, these microlithic way of life or hunter-gatherer sites. Uh, like what we have in Athirambakam, uh, we don't have evidence for Homo erectus. And we can definitely say that Kerala was occupied from the uh, period of 1,50,000 years ago, as I said uh, earlier. Coming to the Neolithic uh, period, which succeeded the Mesolithic in many parts of uh, India and world, and also in Tamil Nadu and Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh, we don't have any clear evidence for a Neolithic uh, uh, settlement. Though some tools have been found in Vinod near Edakal, no typical evidence for Neolithic culture. When we talk about a culture, we cannot define a culture just on the basis of few stone tools. We need to have an entire assemblage. Assemblage is a technical term used by the archaeologists. We don't have any clear evidence for Neolithic cultural assemblage uh, in uh, Kerala. But coming to this uh, Iron Age, from 1000 BC onwards, we have abundant Iron Age uh, megalithic burials. They are very clear. Uh, as all over in South India, we get these megalithic burials from 1200 BCE onwards. So the, the, these burials were erected for the dead and they are very prominent in Kerala. Uh, a site called Mangadu near Kollam, it has produced a date of uh, 1000 BCE. Kakodi is another site uh, dated by Kerala State Archaeology Department that has a date of 800 BCE. So that means definitely Kerala had these Mesolithic, uh, these Iron Age early historic population, otherwise known as Megalithic. Megalith means basically a monument built of 
large stones and these uh, monuments were erected for the dead and they are abundant in kerala mainly in the northern part of kerala or malabar you get a lot of these peculiar uh, monuments such as kudakkalu or amrala stone topikalu and then rocket chamber and hood stones and uh, cist and dolmens nuns are found all across kerala in limited number this particular monument is a uh, megalithic monument it was found at uh, uh, chermangadu uh, near thrissur this is one of the megalithic monument you find such uh, uh, kodakal monuments all across uh, kerala i am not uh, showing all of them you find uh, so many of them in uh, different uh, shapes and design they are very interesting this one is a rocket chamber rocket cave found at umachipoil in kasargod district you can see this is a burial monument you find them mostly in laterite kind of formation kerala you know in the central part of kerala we have lot of laterite exposure when you come to the low lying coastal area you get alluvial and beach sand in the central part of area you get uh, laterite it is in this laterite you find these kind of rocket uh, uh, caves and these rocket caves have an entrance and then steps and then uh, these kind of recesses indicating a well designed entrance and then inside you have uh, these uh, kind of arched um, uh, surface arched uh, dome like structure and over you have a small porthole Uh, and uh, this is the typical design of these rocket chambers this one is very interesting it is found at katakambal uh, in uh, thrissur where we have a small central courtyard surrounded by three four chambers this is one unique and this was probably used as a family vault actually during the iron age these people had a um, tradition of worshiping and offering respect to the dead the practice of uh, erecting burials or building burials started in the mesolithic uh, new middle paleolithic period in india it started in the mesolithic period in the in the europe and in uh, uh, west asia you have neanderthal burials neanderthal people definitely buried their dead and it is believed they offered even flowers because they have identified pollen at the sites and the development of burial itself indicates the human cognition or a humanistic uh, understanding normally when an animal um, sees another uh, animal dies it doesn't do anything simply smells and goes off but in the case of uh, humans they display certain affection and relationship and they felt that it was a proper way to respect the dead by offering a decent burial so this burial monuments were erected in large number from the iron age we call this period iron age because we find a lot of uh, artifacts placed within these burials as offerings and also uh, they were giving uh, these uh, uh, sometime even uh, grains sometime ornaments as offering it has been found in kerala as well as in uh, other parts of south india dolmen is another kind of structure which looks like a table with uh, it was made of uh, four or five slabs with slabs of uh, forming the sides and then one capstone on top and inside they have something like bench like feature and a porthole this porthole is considered as an entrance to the burial and such porthole is believed to be the space through which the dead soul came in and went outside this is an one type of interpretation we also have these urn burials found all parts of uh, kerala and they were adopted in certain coastal regions of uh, kerala hood stone again from the site of uh, chermangadu and then this is another urn burial from uh, thrissur region sometime you find these kind of decorations on the unburi unburial this is rocket cave which i showed already multi chambered rocket cave and this is the plan of the katakambal um, cave and this dates to iron age or early historic as far as the megaliths are concerned we have a problem because we are not able to date them precisely 
they could be anywhere between 1000 BCE to 500 CE or later. Even near Valancheri, there is a place called Parambatukavu, there is a shrine, and nearby there are certain um, archaeological uh, remains like uh, these uh, burials and engravings on the rock. Uh, and uh, uh, as I said, several people have uh, documented these megalithic burials of Kerala, Babington, Logan, uh, William Logan, Fawcett, Sewell, and Wallhouse and uh, Dubrail have commented, Kamiad, Plunderleith, and all these people have uh, documented. Uh, and uh, these burials definitely indicate an advanced way of life. And these people in Kerala had the tradition of, uh, you know, producing metal, iron metallurgy, uh, and they had knowledge of bronze artifacts. They have also been found in some of these burials. Uh, and it was a kind of a complex society that was prevalent in Kerala from 1000 BCE down to 500 CE. And then uh, also we have another important rock art site in uh, Idakal, which is also datable to the Iron Age um, and which has certain important uh, uh, materials. It has a lot of important uh, uh, materials, mainly uh, rock art as uh, engravings and edical images are very interesting because they tell us uh, uh, an important uh, uh, story. Hmm? Uh, can you see my uh, changing presentation? No? Hello? Hello, sir. Uh, the presentation is changing or not? No? Uh, no, sir. No. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, oh. oh, I didn't see that. Uh, oh. Okay. I didn't. Uh... Okay. I thought okay. it was. Yeah, okay, sir. Ah, now it is changing. Now it is right? second slide. Okay, okay. So, oh, right, right. Yeah, the, I, okay. Sorry that uh, it was not uh, changing. There was some problem. Okay. Just see. Okay. Um, yeah. So these are the slides I have been changing, assuming that. Uh, <laughs> okay. Was not there was some technical problem i guess okay so now uh, yes uh, uh, this is the paleolithic chronology that i showed earlier and then uh, we have uh, the sri lankan microliths dating to this period uh, and uh, we have uh, evidence from player party excavation these are some of the tools i'll just show the image these are the tools of Paleolithic artifacts from uh, uh, Kerala. Uh, and uh, these are the tools that were reported from Palakkad region. And this was reported from Kodi Kodi area. I'll just show the images. These are the microliths uh, reported uh, from Palakkad region by Sanal Kumar. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, these are certain microlithic art uh, artifacts. These were small artifacts. They were. Uh, planted on wood and then used and here you can see more microlithic uh, tools uh, right i'll quickly move we don't have uh, much evidence for the neolithic um, culture in kerala we have these burials such as kudakallu rocket chamber hoodstone this one is a um, uh, kudakallu or umbrella stone from chirmangadu uh, what do you see here is a uh, rocket uh, chamber from Umuchi Poyil uh, and uh, you can see here another uh, uh, rocket cave from Katakambal uh, with a central courtyard and four chambers all around uh, and this is a dolmen from Porkalam and this is an urn burial and this is a hoot stone from Chirumangadu another urn burial these are the decorations on pottery uh, and another rocket cave another uh, multi-chambered rocket caves here you can see the plan of this uh, rocket cave it has four chambers this itself tells us that these people had a definite plan of uh, architecture and also it indicates their cognition you can compare this structure with the buddhist vigara interestingly 
the this this, this is uh, again uh, hood stone found in chermangadu these are the scholars who have uh, explored and uh, excavated the kerala uh, megalith and coming to this uh, rock art uh, we have the important site of edakkal uh, uh, which is dated to the iron age period and unfortunately no dating is available my i Uh, undertook some research on comparing this particular uh, edakkal rock engravings and other paintings these are the paintings rock paintings in marayur kerala has very interesting rock uh, engravings and painting and they tell us about the practices of uh, these uh, ancient shamanic practices like uh, dances uh, ritual dances from which uh, the modern day theyam might have evolved because you see lot of uh, similarity between these uh, uh, depiction at edakkal and what is reported from the colonial uh, documents and you get all such uh, 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 dancers who are described as devil uh, dancers and then you have also uh, these kind of forms and this is the modern theyam um performance of the later period definitely there is some similarity between the practices that are depicted at the edakkal and what you see in the contemporary practices so my research correlated with the, these kind of forms along with the references in angam tamil literature where we get reference to veriyadal veil and veriyadal is a very common practice described in sangam literature we have references in nahananuru uh, uh, and also natinai speaking about the performance and uh, one of my research focused on this and also trying to identify certain symbols for example this is a bulakot symbol found at edakkal and uh, you have a beautiful description in poem so what i did was as part of my research correlated with the edakkal rock engravings with the sangam tamil literature and the living tradition of uh, this uh, uh, theyam or other uh, forms so these are some of the uh, important evidence coming to the iron age of kerala several researchers have undertaken um, studies mainly babington thambi rajendran uh, john and uh, jani peter jay sri nayar ganesh uh, these publications are available currently Ab uh, abayan from kerala university is undertaking research so after the iron age iron age was a formative uh, period during the iron age we have evidence for indian ocean trade actually uh, dating to 1300 or 1200 bc there is this mummy of uh, greek uh, uh, this egyptian pharaoh uh, ramses 2 in his uh, mummy they found a, a pepper corn in the nostril which they feel that uh, it came from uh, kerala or uh, southern india which is a very important uh, uh, evidence that suggests that the maritime trade of kerala began somewhere in the late second millennium bc there is another kind of evidence of cinnamon found uh, in the levantine coast they have found the residue of cinnamon called cinnamaldehyde on the pottery um that has been excavated and identified by divori namdar and that dates to 900 bc unfortunately we do not have the right kind of archaeological site in kerala that can tell us about the iron age habitation maybe if we find we'll be able to tell so that is the status till the iron age the early historic period is very important period normally we use the term early historic for the period from say uh, 300 or 500 bce it is this period for which we have a lot of evidence for uh, urbanization across south india use of script and introduction of coinage and brick architecture and long distance trade and network it was during this period a lot of roman coins came to kerala and they are found in all parts of kerala and this famous ports of tindis we don't know where this port of tindis was there maybe it was near calicut and then musiris was an important port it was also known as musiri in sangam literature this was lying near um uh, the site of uh, uh, paravur it was uh, it was very close to paravur 
and Kodungalur, and uh, recently archaeological excavation at the site of Patanam has thrown a lot of evidence of a very important archaeological site, which is identified with the uh, ancient port of uh, Musiris. Uh, and this site was excavated by a group of uh, researchers. Uh, and uh, this particular map shows you the important port towns of Kerala. We know that Tindis was somewhere near Calicut or between Calicut and Ponani. It has not been identified. It is spoken in the Greek literature as well as in the early Tamil literature. Musiris is identified with Patanam. It, uh, it was near uh, this uh, uh, Ernakulam. Uh, and uh, it is near now Ernakulam, it is near Ernakulam and there are also reference to Bekare, Nelkinta and Balita for which we don't have any uh, evidence on the ground and con conventionally scholars were going around the port of uh, uh, Kodungalur and the current river course of uh, Periyar and Kotapuram and the Cherama and Parambu is there. And uh, now, uh, in this area, there is a small village called Patanam, and uh, which was first identified by Dr. K.P. Shajan. Uh, and he collected some pottery. Later on, I had a chance to look at these pottery, and we could identify uh, certain ceramics of Roman origin. And it has been argued by the geoarchaeologists that there was an ancient uh, branch uh, Paleo Channel nearby the Musiris is located. So obviously, uh, when there is so much of flooding, these ancient people did not want to uh, place their port around this area, and that is how this Patanam, a small village, became an important site. And this excavation was carried out by a Kerala Council of Historical Research, in which I was also part. Dr. P.J. Cherian was the director of the excavation, K.P. Shajan, and we carried out the excavation initial 4-5 season. And later on, Dr. Cherian undertook the excavation. Many uh, researchers like um, uh, Preetha Nair and uh, Dinesh Krishnan and other people joined. And based on the excavation, we come to know the chronology of uh, this particular site of Patanam. Uh, and uh, interestingly, we get a lot of uh, material. This is how archaeologists classify chronology. Uh, and uh, you get uh, these uh, four cultural periods, Iron Age, Early Historic, and uh, Early Medieval. Late Medieval is absent and modern period. How archaeologists categorize these uh, chronology is by looking at the raw material. So this excavation turned out to be very important, but it shed light on the uh, life of uh, people of Kerala around 2000 years ago. This is a view of one trench where we have the lowermost Iron Age layers. One of the important archaeological principles which was borrowed from geology is in any kind of sediment, the lowermost layer is the earliest layer and the topmost layer is the latest layer. This is known as principle of st uh, stratigraphy of our law of superposition. This particular law helps us to date archaeology. This is known as stratigraphy. Strata means layer. Stratum means uh, layer in singular. This is a Latin term. So here you can see the sand la layer which has evidence datable to 1000 BC. It has been proved by radiocarbon or C14 dating. And uh, we get a lot of material. So what the archaeologists do, they map all these material. For example, if you classify the Malayalam movies, movies are uh, really a good source of history. See, each movie film uh, produced in a particular time period reflects the material culture that is prevalent in a particular time period. For example, you take the movie of Chemin, it displays uh, the life of the coastal people. Similarly, if you classify the movies of uh, all Malayalam movies from the early 20th century down to the modern time, if you classify the material culture, you can see a lot of typology. See, for example, at one point, if you sort all the material culture, you will see different kinds of dress. 
different kinds of uh, you know ornaments different kinds of phones different kinds of mobile um, you know uh, mobile uh, phones you see you won't see any mobile phone uh, in the movies produced in 98 1980s you will see bell bottom very popular in the 1980s the dress also changes this basic uh, the same concept archaeologists use as typology they classify the artifacts produced in a particular period and then can treat them as a cultural signature for example the material culture nowadays we get material culture borrowed from different areas uh, in the ancient period the material culture from a particular uh, period indicates and serves as a signature for example same thing the food and the dress and everything become cultural signature the same logic is adopted here to understand the uh, classification of the period uh, since we have very limited time i'll quickly uh, uh, you know go through the slides so that you can see and uh, at this side this is a stratigraphy layers and brick architecture and all that you can see we <coughs> we get a lot of uh, ceramics and uh, pottery and these ceramics can be identified as foreign as well as local this particular pottery is known as turquoise glazed pottery and the, this was imported from iraq or iran region about 1700 years ago i know you get such pottery from the site of patanam they tell they help us to identify the trade connection like the way you buy a uh, buy any good from gulf and then you deposit and after breakage you put it in our place similarly the goods that were brought uh, from west asia and uh, rome they are found at the site of patanam this one is sorts of a torpedo jar they have black coating and they indicate the connections with the west asian region mesopotamia and we have amphora shirts, which are Roman pottery. Uh, actually, Sangam literature very beautifully talks about Yamanar Tande, Vinayman Nankalam, Punnudu Vandu, Karyudu Perum, and Yamanar Nankalam Tande, Tan Kamal Keral. So you get all these artifacts from these excavations at Patanam. And these artifacts have been mapped. We map them by layer. These are the layer or locus numbers and identify chronology. This is known as terra sigillata, an Italian pottery found at Patanam uh, and uh, terra, uh, ruleted ware. This was produced in Bengal and that is found at the site of Patanam. And uh, we create a map to identify. This is how archaeologists map the material culture. And uh, these are various raw materials that were used for making beads. And these materials are not available in Kerala. They were brought from Gujarat or faraway region and glass beads all these you find at the site of patanam definitely like what is how is kodikodu now or ernakulam or cochin you have different people visiting and they you know people were trading and they were making transaction after that they throw all of whatever is broken and then when we go and excavate we get these evidence in the same way we found all these evidence at patanam near paravur about uh, you know uh, Paravur uh, for about 2000 years we have evidence for occupation say uh, right from 1000 BCE and more intensive occupation from 3rd century BCE and here these people produced these kind of carnelian which is available in Gujarat they obtained the material and produced these kind of cameo blanks and they were exported to the Roman world and other areas you get Roman glass fragments that were imported iron nails a coin chera copper coin cheras had bow and arrow as their emblem you see bow and arrow on these coins lead coins lead is not available in kerala and gold jewelry these people were producing gold jewelry at uh, uh, the site of um, uh, patanam clearly indicating that it was a commercial center which could be identified in uh, with the Musris. If you are um, familiar with the Greco Roman text, Periplus uh, and Ptolemy and Pliny's works, they talk a lot about the importance of Musri because South India and Kerala and Sri Lanka they lie in an important area in the Indian Ocean. If you look at the Indian Ocean, India hangs like a honeycomb and it was in the connecting point between 
West Asia and Europe down to China. Now, if you know, China is creating a lot of uh, infrastructure in the Indian Ocean after the Cold War. The uh, United States uh, has lost its importance and China is creating one belt, one road. And is, it is having understanding with Maldives and also Bangladesh and Pakistan in order to dominate. And South India and Kerala, they are located in a strategically important maritime route in, uh, linking uh, parts of Africa, Europe and Asia with East Asia. So this trade route was active right from, say, 1000 BCE, and it became all the more important. That is why these traders came to Kerala. If you see Kerala's history, you can see that people from all over the um, Indian Ocean came here and then traded. You get all these material at the site of uh, Patanam. At the site of Patanam, we also find evidence for urbanization in the form of a wharf and uh, uh, this uh, uh, post made of Anjali trees, which is Artocarbus hirsuta and a, a dugout canoe. Uh, this was excavated, a warehouse made of brick built. Actually, brick built architecture was introduced to Kerala in this period, and you get a lot of brick architecture. This is uh, Manikinare or uh, Ringwell uh, from Patanam. These grooved roof tiles. Actually, people started use, using roof tiles in Kerala from the early historic time. Uh, that is why we call this urbanization. People built planned houses, square rectangular houses, brick built houses, mainly at certain centers, not everywhere in Kerala, in this trade center. Here we have a toilet-like feature excavated at Patanam, bones, frankincense, and also a lot of uh, uh, organic remains. Uh, in archaeology, there is a branch called bioarchaeology or archaeobotany, where we recover paleo uh, botanical remains in order to understand the uh, ways of life of people. We have teak, teak, anjali, charatta, kurumulag, mundiri, anjali, all that ex uh, excavated at this site indicating uh, the uh, activities. It was a market, it was a trade center. We also have Ari, Godumbu, Cherupair, Chira, Manga, Nelika, all that coming from clearly indicating Patanam was a trade center. You get a lot of other material. This is a Fortuna Intaglio. It is not Indian, it is a Roman kind of uh, gemstone which is considered to bring uh, fortune. This was worn by the uh, merchants. This was found in uh, Patanam. This is this is for scale, indicating the size 10 millimeter. So uh, this is to, this is one centimeter. So th this is an indication uh, for the to indicate the size of that. We get amphora and all that material culture uh, from the site of Patanam. Th this one is a Chinese 18th 19th century. So archaeologists date uh, the material based on the symbol and their uh, scientific uh, analysis. And uh, glass beads, people were using glass beads. All that is found at uh, Patanam. Now this Musiri's Heritage Project has been created. Now if you get time, you can visit the museum at Patanam. And a lot of these uh, Musiri's Heritage Project uh, sites in the around Kodungalur, we have all these um, Jeraman Masjid, Polyam Palace and everything there. But we are, I'm not coming to the later period. I'm confining myself to, say, 6th, 7th century. I'm talking only about the archaeological remain. Kerala's archaeology is very rich and there is so much to uh, uh, talk about inscriptions, which can be separate lectures. But this is one archaeological site. You get all these materials. This is a beautiful ornament in the form of an axe. And uh, this was a local design, and you can see that how people were very uh, well versed with the technology during that period. These are the raw material, and you know, this one is cornelian, this one is a spindle hole. This was used for weaving uh, textile. We also find this at Patanam, uh, and a lot of uh, such material clearly indicating the uh, nature of uh, occupation. Uh, at the site of uh, Patanam. So this is the uh, last uh, slide. I'll not uh, uh, go into the details here. From now, uh, what we understand is that the Kerala's uh, early historic period was very rich. 
till the site was excavated and uh, identified in 2003 our understanding of kerala history remained different but after the site was excavated it completely changed our perspective that is why archaeology is considered very important if you look at now tamil nadu they are being uh, excavated the site of kiradi and several other sites so the evidence for uh, our history is under our feet each and every village has archaeological evidence unfortunately we have not uh, realized that our thinking conventionally is that uh, only uh, historical record it is true historical records written documents are important for the contemporary or the modern period history but we archaeologists call this archaeological site as a record archaeological record each and every village has a history in the form of archaeological record underneath so that needs to be brought out now you see one archaeological site has thrown lot of evidence now our aim is to identify the right site see you have to identify the right archaeological site and put the trench in the right site if you are um, uh, looking for a needle in the sea you will not find you have to go to the right spot if you want to mango you have to go to the mango tree similarly we have to identify the right archaeological sites on the landscape which is very difficult so by the identification of these uh, archaeological site we are able to better identify again we have excavated so many megalithic sites in kerala but they don't tell us much because they are burial sites but habitation site where people lived sometime they may be under water same they may be under back water so our responsibility lies in identifying the right uh, kind of sites and kerala's history can be exposed a lot by properly investigating these material uh, remains and as young students you can be historian at the same time develop interest and undertake uh, archaeological research because archaeology uh, employment opportunity is limited you can be a historian at the same time go and explore Arche history is not just about you know written record and archaeology our own body has a history now you know genetics tells us we carry a lot of history so living tradition and the contemporary society we need to understand culture and contemporary society without that we cannot understand the past that is why we need to combine a method which i call as archaeo anthropo history where we use archaeology living traditions oral tradition and also critically look at the historical uh, document because historical document this critical approach is very important we cannot just push stories in the form of uh, history we need to adopt a very scientific approach to history only then we can re reconstruct the true uh, correct version of history for which archaeology is a very important source with these few points i finish my lecture thank you it was nice presentation sir we are very much delighted after hearing from you wonderful presentation you point out all the material facts in a simple manner that every presentation you can understand clearly we hear lot of new concepts and strategies from you we are sure that all the participants got a positive energy now we thank you sir we have no words to express our gratitude for your precious time with us thank you sir thank you so much now move on valedictory function of dishana 2021 is a multidisciplinary international webinar series organized by kr srinarayana college balancheri in association with kerala state higher education council from 8 november 2021 to 29th november 2021 the webinar is going to be an excellent platform for discussing recent trends in the field of languages sciences and social sciences 16 renowned plenary speakers from various national and international premier institutes have consented to deliver their lectures now i invite our beloved principal dr v anil kerasri narayana college to well the three c session sir please uh, good afternoon to one and all my uh, beloved friend and uh, archaeologist dr selva kumar Uh, the coordinator of this uh, Dishan Art 2021, Dr. Jitin, IKC coordinator, Dr. Fabida, 
my dear colleagues and students it is a pride moment in, uh, indeed for our college that uh, we are we were able to complete the dishana 2021 in a successful manner this is a international webinar conducted in association with kerala state higher education council it lasted for 20 days covering 16 subjects that started on 8th november inaugurated by the honorable mla of kotakal in the presence of the chairman of the college dr sri k r balan and all the sessions were successfully completed uh, uh, we can ignore the small Uh, technical issues due to the uh, coverage of internet and all but anyway the webinar was a grand success considering the achievement of a self financing college and i think it is a uh, pride of our college that we have covered a big milestone in our history <clears throat> for this i congratulate uh dr jidin the coordinator of the dishana 2021 his uh, sincere involvement made our made this uh, seminar a grand success and also i appreciate the contribution made by the iqc coordinator and the other uh, hods who all uh, were, were fully involved in and they all they were able to Uh, get resource persons of this standard from kerala uh, from uh, outside kerala that is from india and abroad they all managed in a well uh, in a very good manner and i congratulate all the hods the teachers participated and the students and the students were uh, very active because they were uh, uh, covering their master of ceremony in a very good manner and uh, actually i was really uh, surprised and i really appreciate the students for the uh, conduct in the master of ceremony and their involvement also is a, a very good uh, uh, milestone for our college also and uh, how, i think uh, how far the purpose of the seminar is fulfilled when we think about the purpose how, how far it is fulfilled we can uh, think that sometimes uh, some subjects may be Uh, tough to the students but anyway they have opened a window to the world one window to the international scenario of education and their and their higher studies and that will be a beginning and uh, i think uh, it it may it might have motivated the students uh, to reach uh, upper heights in their future <clears throat> and uh, actually we were thinking of uh, conducting a uh, welfare function in a a uh, very good manner and uh, but uh, later we have decided to conduct the welfare uh, function in a simple manner because uh, uh, in the presence of uh, dr sevla kumar uh, and also uh, we have sculpted the uh, presentation of uh, reports at all and uh, dr sevla kumar is my beloved friend and uh, he was my hostel mate uh, and we we are an association more than 30 years he have visited my previous college in my house at calicut i also visited tanjavur and he was one of my closest friend in my hostel days he is junior to me so you are four years junior to me and uh, uh, this is a uh, memorable moment for me that uh, salogumar is uh, attending a seminar in our college uh, in my uh, second college my previous college also he attended and that's a great pleasure and that is why we have uh, Uh, limited the welfare uh, function in a simple way. anyway uh, uh, salo kumar may be and there may be a role model for all the history students uh, he is he is very familiar with the kerala archaeology and all he has visited i think more than 20 25 countries he has visited uh, i think and that is an achievement uh, and i i am being a friend i am proud of a friend like uh, dr v salo kumar 
and they, they, that is the greatest pressure for me that is why i have arranged the military function in such a manner anyway this is a great achievement for our college to successfully conducting this uh, international webinar and i once again uh, congratulate all the uh, participants all the stakeholders all the, the organizers including dr uh, jitin and dr uh, uh, fawida ibrahim and also uh, uh, shijil the you know, faculty of economics also also uh, uh, very much involved in all the aspects of the uh, uh, conduction of this seminar and i appreciate and i congratulate all involved in this uh, webinar and i think we will continue this session at 2021 in next year so as 2022 and uh, and uh, uh, i with immense pleasure i thank you all including dr selva kumar uh, and thank you very much thank you sir now i invite dr jidan m the convener dishana 2021 sir please thank you aisha bahumanapetta kerala state higher education council adu pole dishana 2021 We got again MLA Professor Abdul Hussain Sangar, K. S. Srinarayana College Chairman Sri Balan Sir, K. S. Srinarayana College Principal Dr. Anil B. As well as my and the Adhyapaka Anadhyapaka Sir also came. With the other guys. November 8th, the day we are going to have the Dishana 2021 Multidisciplinary International Webinar Series. In the ഇരുപത്തി ഒൻപതാം തീയതി അതിന്റെ പതിനാറാമത്തെ സെക്ഷനും ഭംഗിയായി വിജയകരമായി പൂർത്തീകരിച്ചിരിക്കുകയാണ് ഇന്നത്തോടെ നമ്മുടെ ദക്ഷിണ രണ്ടായിരത്തി ഇരുപത്തൊന്ന് വെബിനാർ സീരീസ് അതിന്റെ പരിസമാപ്തിയിൽ എത്തിയിരിക്കുകയാണ് നമ്മുടെ ലക്ഷ്യം ദക്ഷിണ രണ്ടായിരത്തി ഇരുപത്തൊന്നിന്റെ ലക്ഷ്യം വിദ്യാർത്ഥികൾക്ക് അവരുടെ സബ്ജക്ടിൽ വ്യത്യസ്തമായിട്ടുള്ള ഫീൽഡുകൾ പരിചയപ്പെടുത്തുക അതുപോലെ വ്യത്യസ്ത ഫീൽഡുകളിൽ എക്സ്പേർട്ട് ആയിട്ടുള്ളവരുമായിട്ട് അവർക്കൊരു ഇൻട്രാക്ടീവ് സെക്ഷൻ ഒരുക്കുക ഇതുവഴി അവർക്ക് തുടർ പഠനത്തിലും ഭാവിയിൽ ജോലി ആവശ്യത്തിനാണെങ്കിലും ഇത്തരത്തിലുള്ള മാർഗരേഖകൾ ജീവിതത്തിൽ പിന്തുടരുക അതിനുള്ള സാഹചര്യം ഒരുക്കി കൊടുക്കുക എന്നുള്ളതായിരുന്നു ഈ ഒരു അവസരത്തിൽ എനിക്ക് അഭിമാനത്തോടെ പറയാൻ കഴിയും നമ്മുടെ ഈ ലക്ഷ്യങ്ങളെല്ലാം തന്നെ പ്രാവർത്തികമായിരിക്കുകയാണ് ഇവിടെ തൊട്ട് മുന്നേ ഡോക്ടർ അനിൽ സാർ പറഞ്ഞതുപോലെ ടെക്നിക്കൽ ഇഷ്യൂസ് അല്പമെല്ലാം നമ്മുടെ പ്രോഗ്രാമിനെ ബാധിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ടെങ്കിലും മറ്റെല്ലാ തലത്തിലും അത് പൂർണ്ണ വിജയം തന്നെയായിരുന്നു ഇത് പൂർണ്ണ വിജയം ആയിരുന്നു എന്ന് പറയുന്നതിൽ ഞാൻ വളരെ അഭിമാനം കൊള്ളുകയാണ് എന്നിരുന്നാലും ഈ ഒരു വിജയത്തിന്റെ പിന്നിൽ ഒരുപാട് വ്യക്തിത്വങ്ങളുടെ അർപ്പണബോധവും കഠിനാധാനവും തന്നെയാണ് അത് ഞാൻ ഈ അവസരത്തിൽ ഒന്നുകൂടെ ഓർമ്മപ്പെടുത്തുന്നു ഇതുപോലെ ഇനി വരാൻ പോകുന്ന വർഷങ്ങളിലെല്ലാം ദിഷണ വീണ്ടും ആവർത്തിക്കും എന്നും ഈ രണ്ടായിരത്തി ഇരുപത്തിയൊന്നിൽ നടന്നതിനേക്കാൾ വളരെ ഭംഗിയായി ഇതിലും കൂടുതൽ ഭംഗിയായി നടത്തട്ടെ എന്ന് ആശംസിക്കുന്നു അതിൻ്റെ ഒരു വിശ്വാസം മാത്രമല്ല ഉറപ്പുകൂടെയാണ് അതുകൂടാതെ ഈ ഒരു അവസരത്തിൽ ദിഷണ രണ്ടായിരത്തി ഇരുപത്തിയൊന്നിന്റെ നടത്തിപ്പിന്റെ ഉത്തരവാദിത്വം എന്നിൽ വിശ്വസിച്ച് ഏൽപ്പിച്ച ഡോക്ടർ അനിൽ സാറിന് ഞാൻ എൻ്റെ വ്യക്തിപരമായ നന്ദി അറിയിക്കുകയാണ് സാറിൻ്റെ മേലിൽ ഏൽപ്പിച്ച ആ ഒരു ഉത്തരവാദിത്വം അതിൻ്റെ ഭംഗിയോടുകൂടെ തന്നെ എല്ലാ തരത്തിലും എനിക്ക് പൂർത്തീകരിക്കാൻ കഴിഞ്ഞു എന്ന് ഞാൻ വിശ്വസിക്കുന്നു ഇതുപോലെ തന്നെ ഇനി വരാൻ പോകുന്ന ഏതൊരു പ്രോഗ്രാമാണെങ്കിലും നമ്മളുടെ കൂട്ടായ പരിശ്രമത്തിലൂടെ അത് അതിൻ്റെ പൂർണ്ണതയിലും വിജയത്തിലും എത്തിക്കാൻ കഴിയും എന്ന് ഞാൻ ഉറപ്പിക്കുകയാണ് ഇതുപോലെ ഇനി വരാൻ പോകുന്ന ദക്ഷിണയുടെ മറ്റു സീരീസുകൾ നമുക്ക് വീണ്ടും കണ്ടുമുട്ടാം എന്ന് പ്രതി പ്രതീക്ഷിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് ഞാൻ നിർത്തട്ടെ നന്ദി നമസ്കാരം It's a proud moment. Definitely, 
there is a milestone in the history of self financing colleges in kerala that we have organized a 16 day long multidisciplinary international webinar series dishna 2021 it was a great success let me enter into my duty first on behalf of kr sri narayana college i express a heartfelt thanks to kerala state higher education council for their collaboration with dishna 2021 next i would like to extend my sincere thanks to professor k k abdu singh tangal member of legislative assembly who inaugurated the session on 8 number 2021 next i would like to extend a special thanks to mr balan a chairman of kr sri narayana educational trust who always support this institution thank you sir next i would like to express my sincere thanks to our beloved principal dr anil b who gave all the support for the successful completion of this dishna 2021 thank you sir all these 16 days we had 16 eminent personalities 16 eminent speakers within india and outside india it includes dr anand kumar dr selva kumar pichaiya miss anaga sabu dr abdul salam mr krishna arjun k dr pulpada yunusali dr kumara pandian ji dr sandosh ch dr ma vijayan dr mohammad abir k c dr george abraham mr mohammad swali k miss bina lawrence mr ai gobi dr fahim k k dr selva kumar who had delivered excellent talks on various uh, topics on behalf of kr sanana college i extend a heartfelt thanks to all these resource persons next i would like to express a special thanks to the convener of this program dr jitin m who always a backbone of this dishna 2021 thank you sir next i would like to extend a special thanks to iqc coordinator dr pepda ibrahim for their uh, cooperation this dishna 2021 next i would like to express special thanks to head of the departments and faculty members of, of our college for their heartfelt input in this in this international webinar series thank you next i would like to extend my sincere sincere thanks to the research scholars and professors from various universities and colleges for their cooperation with this dishna 2021 thank you all at last but not the least i would like to extend our sincere thanks to our beloved students for their cooperation with this dishna 2021 once again thank you all Thank you for this. Thank you, sir. On behalf of KR Srinarayana College, we thank you all the participants once again. We also expect your all-hearted cooperation in our future endeavors too. Thank you all the support. Have a great day.